And we're back, my friends, with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Ghost of Tsushima, which is pretty much, I guess, the last PS4 exclusive title, at least in terms of the big stuff. There's anticipation not because it's like the next big AAA thing, but the fact that this is from Sucker Punch Productions, the team behind the original Sly Cooper games, and then the Infamous series. So Infamous First Light released in uh, 2014, so it's been a long time. I love the games that these guys make and a lot of folks do. Ghost of Tsushima is a very different game for them, but it's certainly an interesting one and it's very solid. You know, it's got some issues, uh, but for some people, the good aspects will make up for it. Depends on what you're into. Also, the game is absolutely gorgeous. And YouTube videos don't really do it justice, especially this one since we had technical difficulties and had to capture it at 1080p. But trust me. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into it. The story setup. You know, no spoilers. This is really just the intro, but it's 13th century Japan. You are on the Japanese island of Tsushima as the Mongols are invading and taking over. You are Jin Sakai, a samurai warrior and nephew of an important samurai lord. Your initial defense Defense against the Mongol invasion in the intro goes south. The Mongol leader Khotun Khan shows up, kind of beats your ass, throws you off of a bridge, and leaves you for dead. From there, Jin recovers, and then you explore the land, plot for revenge, grow stronger, and become a legend. The ghost, as they kind of refer to him here. Uh, and a lot of it is pretty sweet. You know, the presentation and cutscenes, and, and generally, the things that go on are for the most part fairly reserved. You know, there are good character moments, some good acting, and the action and big set pieces only ramp up for when it's really necessary and makes sense. Because there are also lots of slower, contemplative moments in, in the story and the gameplay. Take Jin, for example. His character, or at least his portrayal, is pretty straightforward. Both the Japanese and English voice acting is solid depending on what you choose. I kind of flip back and forth. But what's more interesting about him is his actual story and him coming to grips with his traditional honor samurai code and teachings that, that might need some tweaking in order to beat the Mongols who don't really care about honor. I wish there was more of that and maybe reflecting more in different gameplay decisions. But yeah, uh, watching Jin become more badass and, and meeting lots of people along the way and learning about some of the history and culture is just straight up enjoyable. You know, it's not the Godfather Part 2 of video game stories or anything, but yeah. Still, the gameplay is the main focus. Tsushima is a big, long island filled with stuff to do, little discoveries to make, side quests to do, and people to kill. And killing dudes is pretty much one of the main events here. Sword combat is like a nice hybrid of different types of games, but it, it still manages to feel kind of different. There's no lock-on, first of all, so it, it's more directional based, uh, especially when you're dealing with crowds. And the focus is on using the right attack to break an enemy's defense and then chop them up. It does come into the issue that many games have when it's sharp swords or lightsabers even, you know, you whack an enemy a bunch of times with a weapon that should technically kill them in like one hit. They don't really try to give a solution to that too much here. I think other games have done this better, but hey, it still makes combat fun because sometimes you can perfect parry an enemy and then kill him in a hit or so, so you still occasionally get that satisfaction. And yeah, you're gonna parry a lot. The parry takes some getting used to in this game. It's squishy and it didn't feel right at all until hours into the game where it really clicked for me. And when it does click, it's really good. It's unfortunately another thing that I think a few other games, you know, especially the ones that involve Katana and limited health have really gotten the actual feel of parrying down a little better than this game, but I digress. Uh, stances are really cool though. You know, throughout the game you earn and unlock different combat stances that you can swap on the fly in combat that are better suited for different enemies, like switch to a stance that has the right heavy attack to smash through an axe guy's defenses better. That stuff, especially just swapping in and out of them, is really satisfying. You'll be able to throw explosives and smoke bombs and stuff, but then also use a ranged bow and arrow whenever you want on the fly too, and that works pretty well. Pretty much what you would expect from a game like this. 
I will say I don't really like when the game throws you a large crowd with a bunch of heavy attack guys that you're forced to dodge because then you feel less like a cool, cool-headed, sidestepping, slick swordsman and more just like a video game character rolling around. It kind of undoes things, at least in the early hours, but it's still something you get used to and you work around as you learn the game, especially once you start getting abilities you can spend your resolve meter on to like do a cool attack. The combat definitely shines on harder difficulties, a lot of these types of games do obviously and also it takes a bit more practice than you'd expect you know it's not the hardest game but there's still a lot to learn in, in the fact the first few hours of the game i just wasn't into the combat at all i was actually pretty disappointed but then hours in i appreciate it much more especially as Jin gets way way more combat abilities it feels so much better you know the combat doesn't feel as absolutely watertight as some other games with similar mechanics but it's still immensely satisfying when it's good killing a few dudes in a stand off by properly timing your attack, then opening up into the main fight and flawlessly parrying and killing uh, the remaining attackers, and then you stand there and you wipe the blood off of your sword and sheath it like a badass, that's where the game feels really good and it's doing what it's supposed to. Especially with one-on-one -on -one fights and like boss fights, they're very, very good when you get a one-on-one -on -one sword fight and you get into a flurry of parries. I love that stuff. You know, of course, you can walk into a place, press a button, and sh straight up boldly challenge the strongest enemy to a standoff, and then go from there. You can eventually upgrade that to then chain that attacks and then flawlessly kill off a couple of dudes before the fight even really starts in style. But then on the complete opposite side of that, you can go into a place all sneaky-like. Stealth, straight up, I, I wish they didn't bother putting in the game. I, I don't really like it. My lizard brain still does enjoy jumping down and assassinating a dude or jumping out of grass to stab a dude in the back. Yeah, hey, I like Assassin's Creed, but it's all really simple here and enemies are incredibly dumb. I'm just really starting to get tired of dumb enemies and hiding in the grass and waiting for them to come over and you kill them. Certain games handle it better, but certain open world games, I just feel like it doesn't always need this mechanic. The stealth isn't too satisfying, but it's like the combat. It does get a little better as Jin learns more. You know, he gets more traversal tools and then smoke bombs and distraction devices. But still, even with all of that, I found myself preferring straight up combat every time I could, just so much more. And then there's the open world exploration stuff, which is pretty satisfying because it's simple, good progression and all kind of flows pretty well. You're discovering hot springs to add to your health bar, following a fox through the woods to find a shrine that increases your perk or your charm capacity, or maybe finding a random band of enemies or, or even something more secret. There are a lot of side quests many tied to the story of like a main character, like a, like a side story you can pursue with them in multiple parts. Those are fine, but a lot of the regular side quests really just feel like whatever. You know, you talk to random boring citizens, you do a thing, and oftentimes there's not much personality to it. I appreciate that the quests aren't copy pasted, but they still just didn't really interest me that much. The mythic quests though, hang on, the mythic quests can kick some ass. They have a bit more story and a bit more flair to them and often feel like a mini journey that goes on for a while and you actually usually earn something like a crazy new sword ability or a cool set of ancient armor. I love that stuff. And all of the side stuff, even with some problems, it still all works for me because the game has some good progression, some good character progression and building. You're trying to get stronger and fill a meter to earn ability points, which you can spend on cool new skills and stuff, which I already mentioned really improve the combat and stuff. Uh, you also find the charms I mentioned earlier to equip and give yourself different perks, uh, then you're also gonna wanna explore to upgrade the capacity for those. Uh, find and do a cool bamboo slicing mini game to increase your resolve meter that you spend. Then you're also collecting stuff to spend on leveling up your swords. And then there are sword cosmetics and armor sets, hats, and masks, including dyeing them different colors. The armor sets themselves, you can then go to a armorer and upgrade them to give you more benefits. Plus, there's hunting, technically, kind of. You have a bow and arrow, like I said, and you can kill animals to then use at a vendor to increase your carrying capacities. But really, the hunting is kind of whatever and feels like the game just kind of has it because it's an open world. But still, with all of those progression things, yes, it's a lot, but it's mostly manageable and smart, and I like it. It really makes me like the open world stuff more, especially because a lot of it is given kind of as like a chill out, you know, ancient Japanese vibe. So it makes it feel a little bit less like another open world game with things to check off a list type of thing. Because technically, 
it is, but the game distracts you from the main quests in good, simple ways. And if you can see, the open world itself is gorgeous. That actually really helps with the exploration. Like, wow, it's crazy good. Uh, for me, I think it actually might finally beat out The Witcher 3's video game sunsets. I, I gave the unofficial award to The Witcher 3 for best video game sunsets, and I think Tsushima has it beat. There's not much else I can say about the graphics here other than that level of detail and foliage and environmental movement and crazy use of color is all insane. This is the game that will sell you on an HDR television, 100%, dude. You're gonna find yourself constantly taking screenshots with the easy access photo mode, even if you don't typically do that. Every five minutes, this game has a wow moment. And the black and white Kurosawa filter mode is also pretty cool to switch on if you're a fan of Japanese cinema. It's a shame to lose all that color that they worked so hard on, and it does make a few quests a little more difficult, but I enjoyed using it, switching it on about half the time. However you play it, you know, whatever mode, whatever monitor or TV you have, this game is something else in the looks department. My goodness. It's one of the best looking console games, and in the graphics department, it's just a really good good way to wrap up the PS4 lifespan, if you ask me. So Ghost of Tsushima, it's a beautiful game, pretty fun combat, some lame stealth, great progression, a decent story, and a very nice explorable world with a cool Japanese vibe. It's not a bad game, man. If you enjoy Japanese samurai culture or maybe some classic Japanese cinema, or maybe a, just a good katana-based open world game, this might be right up your alley. You know, I do wish it had a little bit more sucker punch flair to it, but still they succeeded in what they wanted to make here and it's a satisfying play for me personally. But of course, that's just me. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion because this is a before you buy. Now I wanna hear your opinions down in the comments. Do you dig the combat? Do you have little issues with it? Do you think it's perfect? Are you like me where you think some games do it a little better? Do you love the open world? Are you playing on a PS4 or a PS4 Pro? How's it running for you? Let's talk about anything Ghost of Tsushima down in the comments. Hopefully we helped you out, maybe steered you in the right direction. If you think we did, clicking the like button's the best way you can help us out. We always really appreciate it here. And if you're new, consider subscribing, dude, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.